On today's episode, we've got brand new rumors and updates about the 25K Tesla Compact, new Cybertruck sightings and design details, SpaceX is racing closer to their orbital Starship launch, Tesla settle a court battle against their own customers, and we find out what happens when a Megapack battery catches on fire. So let's get going. Tesla's planned $25,000 compact car has been hotly anticipated by millions of people around the world who are eager for a Tesla vehicle they can actually afford. In September 2020, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla was finally reaching a level of development that would allow them to build an electric car that they could sell for a starting price of just $25,000 US dollars. Still not the cheapest car, but cheap for an EV and very cheap for a Tesla, who had previously only been able to get the Model 3 down to about 35 grand at its cheapest option. Earlier this year, we had news from the president of Tesla China that this new compact design might be going into the testing and production phase this year at the Tesla Gigafactory in Shanghai, but it's been radio silence on this car ever since. But now we have new rumors coming out of China that suggest the compact Tesla has already reached the prototype phase and is gearing up for a trial production run later this year. This update comes from Ray4Tesla on Twitter who shared a screen grab from a Chinese social media post. Ray says that the elusive cheaper compact model may come sooner than you think. The prototype is said to have been completed and most component suppliers have been lined up. Trial production has been planned for the end of 2021. Ray says that the source is reliable and has brought several leaks to the surface before, which have later turned out to be true, but obviously being right before doesn't mean he's right today, so take it with a grain of salt. This would be huge if true. When Elon confirmed last year that Tesla was planning to build this car, he put the delivery date off to 2023. But this is now the second report we've seen out of China that would suggest that the production can begin in at least some capacity by the end of 2021. And if that's the case, it feels like a wide release in 2022 could be very likely. I know many Tesla vehicles do arrive late, but remember the Model Y launch? That came like six months earlier than we were expecting, so it can happen. And there is one more bit of news that might back up this claim. We've got a new patent claim from Tesla titled Diecast Aluminum Alloys for Structural Components which describes an aluminum alloy that is both extremely tough and ductile. The aluminum alloy would not require further processing as well, allowing the company to improve its production costs. All right, I'm going to be honest and not pretend like I knew what the word ductile meant before writing this. So it just means that the alloy is able to be deformed without losing toughness, pliable but not brittle which is exactly what Tesla needs for their casting process. The aluminum has to be melted down, injected into a mold, and then cooled again while still maintaining its strength. The key word in this particular patent is would not require further processing, which is important because many structural components made of aluminum alloys today may require extra processes like heat treating, which improves strength, hardness, ductility, and corrosion resistance. That extra step of heat treating means extra cost and extra time in manufacturing. The best theory out there for the 25K Tesla is that it will feature a fully casted body and frame for maximum efficiency in production. It might even be a single piece casting for the entire structure of the vehicle, and this new casting alloy that Tesla just patented could be the material that they will use for that structure, particularly if this new alloy does not require heat treating or finishing of any kind. Being able to move the frame straight from the Gigapress to the assembly line is the kind of efficiency that we are going to need to make this new car possible. Remember that it's not just about making a cheap car. Pretty much anybody can do that. It could be easy, but it would suck. 
Tesla is trying to make a good car that lives up to their brand standard that is also affordable at the same time. And that is really difficult. What appears to be a small handful of Cybertruck body parts has been spotted inside Tesla's Giga Austin facility. Now, I'm not saying I know exactly what we're looking at here. It's all wrapped in a lot of plastic, but we can very clearly see that low triangular point that is very reminiscent of the Cybertruck design. Or maybe we're just seeing what we want to see and that's just an optical illusion or coincidentally shaped pile of stuff. I don't know. What do you think? We do know that there is at least some progress being made on Cybertruck production in Texas. We heard Vice President of Vehicle Engineering at Tesla, Lars Moravai, say during the Q2 earnings call, quote, We are moving into the beta phases of Cybertruck later this year and we will be looking to ramp that in production and take it to Texas after Model Y is up and going. Speaking of the Cybertruck, Electrek just published a really interesting article where they tracked down a bunch of the design references in the Tesla Cybertruck patent filing. There were seven existing patents that are referenced in the Cybertruck document, and while a few are modern, some of them go back to decade-old concept cars. Electrek was able to find some of those original design drawings and they show a few very pointy sports cars, an angular off-road buggy kind of thing, and an aerodynamic pickup bed cover that holds a very similar shape to the Cybertruck. It seems like none of these patents were ever made into production, but it is fun to imagine the design evolving from those old drawings in the 70s up to the alien looking Cybertruck that we have today. As part of what Elon Musk has described as a Starbase surge, SpaceX has reportedly sent hundreds of employees from their stations in California, Florida, and Central Texas to Boca Chica, where SpaceX has been working for months to build Starship's first orbital launch pad and booster. The progress on the first ever Starship and Super Heavy combo has been moving forward at a spectacular pace. In the span of just two days, SpaceX outfitted Starship's first orbital class booster with four giant grid fins, stacked the rocket to its full height, and began the process of installing up to 29 Raptor engines. In a sign of the breakneck pace SpaceX is working at, teams began installing Raptor engines on Booster 4 before its two halves were even fully welded together. In a matter of hours, no less than 12 Raptor Boost engines had been rolled out and lined up for installation on the first flight-worthy Super Heavy. Just days earlier, Elon revealed the first glimpse of the most complex and important part of the Super Heavy, its thrust section. He said the SpaceX team is cranking hard to install the primary fuel lines, which will be followed by a maze of secondary plumbing and wiring. The giant metal disc is the structure that will hold not only the 29 rocket engines, but also the miles of plumbing, pipes, and connections that will be needed to make them all work. For the most part, the booster is just a cylinder with two big-ass propellant tanks inside, one for liquid oxygen and one for liquid methane. It's this one engine puck at the very bottom that makes the whole thing work, or not work. At full thrust, Booster 4's 29 Raptor engines will likely produce more than 5,500 metric tons of thrust, making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built or tested. At full thrust, those 29 Raptors will consume more than 17 metric tons of cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen every single second. The Starship launch vehicle's debut orbital test flight could take place as soon as this month, August 2021. Starship will lift off from Starbase, Texas and return from orbit to land in the ocean off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. Hey, by the way, if you're interested in more spaceflight content on topics like SpaceX, the Boeing Starliner, and the NASA Artemis mission, then you'd probably love our brand new YouTube channel, The Space Race. We are working hard to bring content that is both informative and entertaining to the space race. So please check it out, subscribe and drop some comments on the video, letting us know what you think. There's a link down below in the description. 
Tesla has agreed to settle a class action lawsuit over throttling battery capacity in their Model S vehicle. In 2019, it was reported that Tesla owners had begun seeing their range drop significantly following a vehicle software update. And on top of that, these same Model S drivers noticed that the car was also taking much longer to recharge. These issues were only reported by some owners of the older Tesla Model S with an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, which was discontinued in 2016. At the time this problem first emerged, Tesla told everyone that the goal of the update is to protect the battery and improve battery longevity by revising the thermal management system in the battery pack and it resulted in a range loss for only a small percentage of owners. The effect of the update was to reduce the maximum voltage of the car's battery, and the root cause of the reduction was due to an incident in Hong Kong where a Model S caught fire. That reasoning didn't exactly go over very well with people who suddenly found their very expensive cars being nerfed by a manufacturer update. It led to a series of lawsuits in different markets, demanding Tesla to compensate the affected owners. One of those lawsuits was a class action in the United States, meaning a whole bunch of claimants being represented under one court case. Tesla went on to issue another update in March 2020 that brought the voltage on the affected Model S sedans back to original levels, and it is now ready to settle the matter. The automaker has submitted a settlement with the court that involves paying $625 to each of the 1,743 Tesla Model S owners in the US who are affected by those updates and to pay the legal fees associated with the class action suit. In total, the automaker is paying out $1.5 million in damages. Even Elon himself admitted that Tesla was off base with the original decision. He said on Twitter, if we are wrong, we are wrong. Musk said, in this case, we were. He then added, Tesla policy is never to give in to false claims, even if we would lose, and never to fight true claims, even if we would win, which is a very respectable stance to take. Can't really argue too much with that. A Tesla Megapack battery has caught fire while being tested at the newly registered Victoria Big Battery in Australia. The cause of the fire is currently unknown. Now this is obviously not an ideal result, but it's not as bad as it looks. This fire occurred during the testing phase of the battery farm. They were looking for problems in the system. They found one. And the Megapack system worked exactly as it was supposed to in this kind of situation. The fire was contained to the pack where it began and didn't spread to the neighboring batteries. This is an uncommon occurrence in lithium ion batteries that they call a thermal runaway reaction. Tesla has actually spent a lot of time engineering their large batteries in a way that would prevent the spread of fire between packs. We even saw them purposely set fire to an old power pack battery unit in 2016 just to see what would happen to it. The units will burn and smolder, but they don't explode or anything dramatic like that. Of course, there are downsides to this kind of event. The fire department can't really put it out and cooling the pack down would just prolong the process. They just had to let the mega pack burn itself out, which again is good because the fire was contained by the system and didn't spread. But also it did create a shit ton of toxic smoke, which is bad. Officials did have to issue air quality warnings for many of the surrounding areas. The fact is the risk of a fire is a constant no matter what kind of product you are talking about. If the thing you make is flammable, then at least one of them will probably eventually catch on fire. Doesn't matter if it's a car, a cell phone, a computer, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, the fact that it didn't explode or spread to multiple packs in the area makes this test a resounding success for the Megapack design. By the way, don't forget to sign up for the Tesla Space newsletter for more news and fabulous prizes. We deliver all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and of course Neuralink in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to join is in the description below. It's theteslaspace.com. Once you sign up, be sure to check your promotions tab to make sure our emails are going to your main inbox. Also subscribe to our new channel over at The Space Race if you haven't already. Again, there's a link down below in the description. And if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, 
and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.